now, oh, and I just saw that we're streaming live. Thank you, Lucas that, uh, and, and Pauli. That, uh, so he's a, he's a founder and leader of the Eco Village movements in West Africa. And we're gonna hear more from what he's doing, but it's wonderful, wonderful work of taking these ideas from Fiendhorn, from Oroville and other places in the world and turning the reflection and, and seeing how can these ideas engage with the realities on the ground in West Africa. And so of course he'll tell us much, much more about that. But um, he is, or was recently, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Palm, the president of uh, Global Eco Village Network Africa, Gen Africa. He is the former mayor of the eco town Gedi Shante, which was one of the first eco villages to start this movement. Um, as the Lama pointed out, he's a fellow at the uh, Fiendhorn Institute. And he is also the founder and director of a major NGO called uh, Regis, which has a wonderful name in, in French, which I won't take a stab at, but uh, is all about on the ground, making the networks between the many eco villages in West Africa. And in his spare time, he's a professor at a university. I'm not sure how all these things fit in to one life only. So, um, Really, let me just uh, quickly overview the plan for our next uh, hour and a bit, and then I'm going to pass to Dr. Palm. So first, uh, we're going to hear our inaugural SEBI talk, a short, powerful talk, which opens horizons from Dr. Palm, about 20 minutes or so. And he's going to share some images as well with part of his talk. And then we're going to open for a conversation between Dr. Palm and Lama Samtem. And that will go about 30 minutes as well. And following that, we'll have about 30 minutes for uh, an open uh, question and answer session. And we'll give a bit of instruction on how that will work when the time comes. And so that's pretty much an overview. And uh, I almost forgot to mention that this is also the beginning of the college here at SEBI, here at the Camino de Mayo, that there are 20 students who are joining us, uh, 10 students from the United States and 10 students from Brazil. And from the United States, we have people from all over the country and particularly from the Upaya Zen Center and Roshi Halifax, who's the director of that Zen Center will be joining us in a month. And then we also have people from all over Brazil, from Maceo to, uh, to Viamão. And so with this, uh, Osman, uh, I think you disappeared for a moment. And, uh, but if you're ready, please uh, take it away. Uh, thank you very much, my friend uh, Andreas. Uh, and I would like, uh, first of all, to say uh, just uh, in uh, uh, Portuguese, Buenas tardes, uh, everyone. And uh, it is a privilege and an honor to be here today with you, exchanging with you, you know, on some uh, issues uh, pertaining global and local issues as well. And uh, so I really would like to thank you uh, for making this bridge happen uh, between Redes, West Africa, and also uh, uh, SEB communities. So uh, this is uh, deeply appreciated here. And uh, thank you so much also, uh, uh, Lama, for your kind uh, introduction. And uh, I am really looking also forward you know, to exploring more possibilities of uh, partnership uh, uh, later. And uh, my talk is uh, focused on, uh, uh, I think it's time now to share my video, right? Uh, to share my, um, my screen. Can you see it? Not yet. Right, May's coming. There, okay, we're good. Right. Yeah, it's a focus on um, eco-village strategies in uh, Senegal River Valley. And of course, there are so many more initiatives happening elsewhere uh, in uh, Senegal and in the region. But I mean, I just want to, you know, because 20 minutes is relatively short, I would like just to give you a taste of really what's happening uh, on the ground here in, uh, in, uh, in this part of, of Senegal. Well, uh, uh, you know, to complete the introductions, uh, also I am, I was born in the north of Senegal in a very, very small village. And uh, the lady you can see below is the mother of my father, my grandmother. 
and uh, she lived over a century and some years, and her name is Kumba Kebe. And she was a very strong shepherdess with uh, so many cows, and each cow had its own name, and uh, he, she knew the history and everything. And then she was more at the service of the cows than the other way around. And um, when I was a kid, I used to help her, you know, look after her cattle. And of course, we would spend, uh, you know, the whole day, you know, uh, without food and everything. But I mean, she really fed me with the history, uh, with the stories. She told me how it used to be when she was young, uh, etc. And then for me, every day, uh, uh, you know, I spent with her looking after the cattle was a, a really very uh, uh, important formative, you know, day. Uh, hunger, physical hunger was no longer there because she fed me uh, with so many stories and everything. And of course, um, uh, she was, uh, she passed away where, you know, about eight years ago. And until the very last minute, she was very mentally conscious, uh, alert and present. And, uh, you know, um, in the area uh, where she, you know, used to live with lions. Uh, and then she is, uh, uh, she lived in, on a place called Elephant Island. Uh, she could move from one village to the other without never seeing the sun because it was all covered with long, uh, you know, tall trees and, uh, you know, and so the biodiversity was very, very impressive. And the, uh, the, uh, the other elder I would like to uh, introduce to you also is below. Can you see him here? And uh, he's still alive. And this person well, uh, is in Gede. When you uh, come around, you can see him. And he was attacked. Uh, by a lion in the late uh, in the late 50s, uh, when he was a young shep uh, shep uh, shepherd, and uh, and then when people tell us these stories now, uh, it's very very difficult for us to believe in those stories because the reality on the ground is so different from what it used to be from what these elders have just lived. Um, so. Um, um, uh, so uh, we uh, again we are in the Sahel region. Uh, and then we are facing so many ecological problems at the moment. You know, the Sahel region is this region just below the Sahara Desert. Uh, and um, rain, it rains very little every year. Uh, sometimes, you know, the peak temperatures are around uh, close to 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, so don't pay me a visit uh, in May or June. You can come later in the year, in December when it's much cooler. And we have more and more sandstorms. Uh, we have more and more also uh, cycles of drought. And, you know, this year we've had uh, very, very important quantities of rain. So what used to rain in three months just rained in just a weekend. And then, of course, today many uh, places in Dakar are flooded. And also the ecosystems in the region now look like something like this uh, in the north of Senegal uh, and also southern uh, Mauritania. And, um, of course, you know, uh, governments have been have come up with a response, you know, to create what they call a green wall. Uh, it's a, a project of the African Union. Uh, it uh, stretches from Senegal, Mauritania, all the way to Eritrea. Uh, so people are supposed, you know, to uh, plant trees uh, and uh, stop the advancement, of the encroachment of the of the desert. And of course, you know, this has some successes, but also uh, some challenges uh, because uh, some, uh, part of the challenges is this is not really fully owned uh, and articulated with the local communities. Uh, and also I'm uh, very, very also delighted to inform you that the, uh, the former director of the national agency for this Green Wall project is already also part of Redis team. And he is uh, also, he brings lots of experience and lots of connections also to Redis. So, and uh, um, uh, REDES, uh, uh, which stands for um, Network for Eco-Village Emergence and um, uh, Development in the Sahel, uh, you know, was uh, uh, created not uh, long ago, just about five years ago, but I mean, it has benefited from uh, experiences that, you know, happened because, you know, uh, it was just uh, in 2015, we just, um, uh, we just, you know, registered the organization, but I mean, the work had started much longer, uh, much, much earlier. Um, and then we started, you know, really uh, with Redes, 
uh, organizing communities around how to regenerate their land, how to produce their own food, because also one of the uh, distressing things of this world is that, you know, we have so many multinationals who tell us what to eat, uh, what uh, uh, our sense of happiness should be, uh, what, to, what to wear, what to, you know, I think this is really tyrannical. And at some point we definitely need to stop and also really think of uh, ways to create our own happiness and not follow what television tells us or what internet or what Monsanto also and other multinationals like this, or also the IMF, or even sometimes also our central government because our central governments are also uh, very much in connections uh, or under also the oppressions of uh, these uh, multinationals. So we started you know, creating some projects in uh, several uh, villages you know, to uh, improve nutrition, uh, to regenerate the, the land, to create income. Um, and all this really without not much, much money in our hands because money sometimes can be an obstacle. And here we really use the energy of the community, the power of the youth, the power of the women you know, to make things move on the ground. And also we've been also weaving some uh, strong alliances with local government and also na national agencies. Uh, for example, with Pima, Pima is a Senegalese, uh, a Senegalese national agency in charge of developing a Senegalese bordering region. It's called Pima. And then also with the mayor of, uh, of uh, Gamaji, another, you know, and also the mayor of uh, Mauritania, because uh, the idea we have now is to federate uh, 50 villages in Mauritania and 50 villages in Senegal. Uh, and then so that we can ex exchange our experiences, we can also work together to stop desertification and mass, uh, mass uh, you know, poverty and immigration. Uh, and also we have very, very uh, inspiring uh, villages that have been very successful, both in Mauritania and in Senegal. And the idea is to use these villages, successful villages, as engines to also uh, bring change uh, in the other villages. So uh, here, when you you can see here, uh, this is the transborder uh, hub, eco village hub we are uh, creating. And then we uh, have access to some land in the north of Senegal. We come to in the desert, and then we invited, you know, leaders from. The different villages, uh, religious leaders, the women leaders, the young, uh, you know, youth organizations, and then we, you know, we stayed a whole day uh, talking about permaculture, talking about how to come together and work in complete intelligence. Uh, and uh, uh, in uh, we are going to uh, create an emerging food, uh, I mean, to create a food forest uh, by uh, so River Senegal, and then we had the elders of the community who came to bless the land. So this also to reinforce the commitment of the, of the, uh, of the local authorities and organizations you know, to this project. And uh, here, uh, this is also part of the uh, transformation you can see uh, on the top, you can, uh, it's a project that happened in a herding village. And uh, you know, the women, the president of the women's organization said, now we don't need to, when we go to the market, it's just to buy a fish or some, uh, or, or, or meat. I mean, we produce our vegetables together, you know, in our own village. So uh, our uh, life have uh, improved uh, a lot. And then, you know, there are a series of uh, trainings uh, so that, you know, to raise awareness uh, and, uh, uh, you know, also we'll have some trainings on eco-village design. And also we are in an area where people do not necessarily read, do not necessarily write. So we use theater, theater to change people's behaviors, change people's uh, you know, uh, actions on the ground. I may come back to this uh, in, a, uh, in a while. Um, so, uh, so this is a small village in Mauritania. Uh, the first uh, picture in, you know, and Mauritania is much closer to the desert. And what happens, you know, this community, you know, after a series of discussions, series of negotiation, they fenced 18 hectares. So the only, um, the only um, investment here was the fence and the nature did the rest. So in less than 10 years, it became a real forest. You know, the, the fence was just to keep the animals out so that, you know, the trees can grow. And after that, you know, the, the, 
uh, the animals were reintroduced uh, into uh, this place because they also had, uh, you know, and then because these trees are close to, uh, uh, have become a, a sanctuary for animals, you know, it has boars, monkeys, bees, and uh, all sorts of, you know, uh, insects. So these uh, nutrients from this, uh, uh, this forest also feed the fish in the, in the river and the fish uh, also attract fishing birds. And then the full cycle of, uh, of life, you know, uh, is, is back through just this initiative. And also we uh, try to produce our own uh, seeds, uh, train our um, uh, farmers, and also, you know, really for people also to uh, be able to uh, produce the food that they eat and eat the food they produce without pesticides, without chemicals. And here, because we had also goats going in different places, uh, so we had, uh, you know, uh, our partners from Los Portales in Spain who came to train our women how to make cheese with their uh, goat's milk. And this is very, very successful because uh, it, it's not known, cheese is not known in this region. And people started producing this and also uh, some small businesses have already started. Uh, reinforcing also local cereals. Um, and also we have, a, uh, we have a very strong partnership with um, Damanhur Eco Village in Italy. So they, uh, we organize a couple of uh, uh, food processing uh, trainings for women from different villages. And also this serves really to connect uh, women together and uh, really um, so there's so much solidarity and learning among women you know after after this and again here as i told you uh, theater uh, to change the way of thinking of people theater for example against plastics the importance of education ecology design how to uh, feed children with you know how to avoid a certain uh, disease etc so really it's been a very important tool that we've been using uh, to change uh, people's, uh, you know, uh, minds and also actions on the ground. Uh, and here, part of the projects we're doing is we are building now a transborder community training center in the north of Senegal, uh, so that you know Mauritanians and Senegalese uh, can come together. Because uh, between these two countries, we have an artificial border that is a legacy of the French uh, colonialism. But I mean, these borders have divided families, have separated people with their land. And then one of our uh, objectives is really to put, to bring these families back together. And what's really, what was really amazing for me when we were building this, some of the uh, Mauritanian uh, people from the Mauritanian delegation, they've never crossed the border because they were afraid of Senegal. They were afraid of so many things. And then uh, uh, bringing people together is definitely what we try and do. So we've got, we've got, you know, also a school, uh, school program. We build classrooms in places. Uh, we distribute, you know, uh, because education is really the tool, number one tool also to change, uh, to get people out of poverty. Uh, here we have, um, uh, usually we get, you know, international students, usually from the US Senegalese students, and we go to a village and we, uh, together with the youth of this village, we also build the classroom, et cetera. Uh, so, uh, and Redis also has a very important international service learning program. We receive US students, we recruit an equal number of Senegalese students and together, you know, they learn from each other and they go and learn from the host of families because also many of the Senegalese students who live in Dakar have, don't know much about uh, uh, rural uh, realities. So, and this becomes a really a place, a platform where uh, multi-directional learning, uh, you know, take place. So, and then when the students come, they can work uh, uh, with women, they can work with the schools, with their uh, health centers, they can, you know, really support uh, the uh, environmental uh, projects we have. Uh, and also in the past 12 months, we have uh, built, uh, we have dug 12, uh, not 27 wells for people to have access to water, for people also to start, you know, small uh, gardens, for people to feed, uh, to give uh, water, to quench the thirst of their cattle. Because though we live by the river, it's been very heavily polluted by 
pesticides and everything. And then this is also part of the solutions uh, that also Redes is bringing into the communities. Uh, yes, again, uh, the same picture here. Uh, yes, you can definitely see how all this is really improving uh, the life of the people and also uh, helping people also avoid water related uh, disease. Um, and here is the, the emerging food forest that we are, it's, it's, almost, it's almost desert. And then uh, the, the idea is to uh, plant 3000 trees here, uh, fruit trees to stop desertification, to produce food, to produce also uh, to regenerate the land. And the project has started today. While I'm talking to you, we are putting a solar, uh, solar um, uh, water pumping station in this, uh, in this, and then we have also already also organized campaigns of uh, planting here and uh, celebrating our cultural heritage because also globalized globalization is a real challenge to our cultures. People uh, get all sorts of uh, news and all sorts of uh, influences from TVs, from internet and everything. And we want also the people to be really proud of their cultural heritage, uh, of their traditions, of their of the traditional knowledge, you know, in terms of healing, in terms of uh, really taking care of, uh, and uh, really what's happening in the West in general is not really, uh, you know, is not what people may think. I mean, in the West, uh, in general, people are very uh, are lonely. You know, they though many have uh, access to material wealth and everything. Uh, you know, I don't think you know. Uh, this is the kind of development we would like to go into. So Africa needs to create its own um, its own development model and not follow what's happening in the US or any other parts of the world. And uh, so uh, I don't want to take so much of your time. And uh, so again, uh, we are opening our arms and our hearts uh, and, uh, you know, so that we can join uh, our hands and uh, change this world for our children, as uh, uh, Lama has just said, for the children of our children. Uh, so uh, if uh, you feel also called, you can connect with Red S in some way or the other. And thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much, Osman. And uh, whether people would like to join me with a clap like this or a digital clap, that uh, please join me to uh, thank uh, Osman for this wonderful presentation. An incredible amount of information in the world's shortest and only SEBI talk of 15 minutes. Great. Um, well, wonderful. Luckily, we still have another half an hour um, for Osman to develop some of these ideas. So I'd like to invite Lama Santem to open up and about the next 30 minutes, uh, Lama Santem will be asking Osman some questions and perhaps a good conversation will develop or so. And uh, so we'll see what happens. So uh, please Lama Santem. I think you're muted Lama. I think you're still muted. And now? Now you're good. <laughs> it was really wonderful. We went here to do exactly this, but <laughs> we're really far away from this. <laughs> but now we can see that it's possible. It's really wonderful. Uh, I think all the people from uh, the 60s, past century are thinking what to do in this direction, how to gather the, how to put the people together and how to find a kind of development different from the Americans, you say, né? You, from the Western people. <laughs> and we joke it with Andreas here. And <laughs> it, it's, it's real wonderful. Uh, uh, these activities are, are in some sense uh, um, going beyond all the shortcomings of uh, Sahara, of that very, uh, this very dry region and uh, poor soil with uh, the poverty and the uh, disinformation. 
host, hostile uh, environment and uh, um, the illit illiteracy of the people and the lack of uh, information and uh, also with all the burden of internet and uh, TV uh, and uh, multinationals and other kind of uh, uh, solution and uh, the the model of economical model asking the people for uh, for enrich for to for bring uh, the model of uh, of uh, 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 money uh, dominated the minds and uh, I, I found uh, really great uh, this uh, uh, this um, movement and this success we can say success of the the activities uh, i would like you to start asking um, a question that is very important for us here also uh, this question is how to put the people together and when they are together when they are together how to uh, help the people to arrive to a common direction, a common view. How to arrive this common view as a better view. How to reach this common view and uh, how to develop from this the act activities each one can do. Uh, all the time we have these uh, things. In some sense we can sometimes uh, we can uh, get together, we can make a circle of people, but it's not so easy to make the people reach a common view and, uh, and share a common view and from this common view to, uh, to feel each one engaged in some sense with their, their abilities in a positive direction. Could you please help us with our, your experience? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Lama. Thank you very, very much. Um, and uh, well, I mean, here in the in uh, rural uh, Senegal and Mauritania, again, as I said, uh, it's uh, an uh, we are in an illiterate context. Uh, again, not many people can speak the, of, uh, the official or write the official languages. And again, what's really wonderful about, you know, some of these uh, social media networks like WhatsApp, you don't need to, to uh, you don't need to read and write. We have so many groups uh, of WhatsApp people, you know, just to share. We use this also as learning tools. People um, uh, in villages, people, you know, have uh, groups and then we can share. Uh, lots of uh, ideas. And also, uh, there is also a network of uh, community uh, radios that we can also use and talk to the people in, the, uh, in their own uh, languages uh, so that they can also better understand. Um, and um, uh, uh, also in our traditions, we have uh, people who are known as uh, griots. These are the traditional communicators. Uh, in the past, people used to use drums and uh, uh, talk to the people. Uh, yes, yes. I mean, because when, for example, the chief uh, or some community event happened, you know, they would use the drum uh, and the number of the beats, and the, uh, all these technical, so people from far away will know. Uh, now uh, we'll decode the message. Um, I think, I and it. also here, uh, yeah, and uh, here, I mean, women are organized in uh, associations, cooperatives, uh, you know, and youth also are organized in uh, uh, associations. Uh, it's just a question of investing so much uh, of time, uh, connecting with these local uh, leaders, and also bringing in also the, uh, the local uh, authorities. Uh, yeah, and... Uh, and also speaking the language they understand, speaking, uh, showing them the realities, and also getting uh, these uh, elderly people tell us how it used to be long ago, uh, getting also our religious people to tell us what is our duty, our, uh, what, 
is expected from us, you know, mm -hmm. as uh, people with faith, what we should do. And again, uh, in the north of Senegal, it's a very, very open Islam, which has nothing to do, of course, with what's happening in some other places, because uh, in Islam, life is sacred. Life is sacred and ecology is really a fundamental also uh, aspect of Islam. And uh, I have written myself an article on this, so uh, we can share. I think, you know, there are different entries. We can mobilize, uh, mobilize people uh, and also at the district level, at the village level, at the community level, between communities and even between countries. So gradually and, uh, you know, everyone brings in their, uh, their contribution and then it becomes a, a reality. Wonderful. And uh, um, you mentioned uh, sometimes about uh, different moments. We were mentioned about the, the whole of the women. Uh, in some sense, it, uh, uh, it's important in itself, but uh, uh, then I would like to ask you the whole of the men also. And the way you mentioned so many times the women. <laughs> I, yeah, I, actually, Actually, we Africans, we really do not understand all this movement empowering women, empowering, you know, because here, yeah, because here in Africa, actually, the power is in the hands of the women. Uh, women uh, are the ones who educate uh, families. Women uh, are the ones who manage the, the resources. Women are the ones who pull the, in a really positive way, you know, uh, the, uh, the threads of, uh, of, of communities. I mean, they are real power. And uh, men are just given an honorary, uh, you know, sort of uh, position. Uh, this, they are the heads of the families, but in fact, the power is already uh, in, the, in the hands of women. Mm -hmm. And then it's uh, the, uh, mm -hmm. the school, the, uh, the French, uh, the Western school that have completely changed the roles uh, in the past, uh, <clears throat> Uh, yes, in the mid thirties up to now, uh, and then suddenly women found themselves, you know, behind scenes uh, in uh, different ways. Um, so actually, uh, I mean, if, if in these rural areas where we do not have a big uh, impact of uh, the foreign schools, I mean, women are still very very strong figures. They are the ones who who make the decisions, and uh, when. You, we know how to approach and talk to them. We know how to get them involved in some of these projects. Once they own it, so yeah, uh, they just uh, yeah, turn it into success. I, I found it great. You are using theater for communication and teaching the people. It's really good, wonderful. I can imagine. It. And uh, I'm glad to hear that the. Uh, Islam is a tradition that uh, are connected with nature and the protection of nature. And uh, it's wonderful, really. Then, um, um, why it happened to that region? Why the, the nature was destroyed? What happened? Yeah, uh, I ask you, you because yeah. in some sense, we are seen now uh, the destruction of uh, Amazon Basin, the Amazon forest. And uh, 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 Lutzenberger in the 60s, he said the soil of Amazon is very um, uh, fragile. If we don't keep it fragile, if we don't keep the forest, we can develop uh, a kind of desert, desert there also, and uh, a desert. And uh, I remember him to discuss about the similarities with Africa and how it happened with Sahara. And uh, uh, old historians, they remember Herodotus, for example, he mentioned uh, how it was wonderful that region of, uh, uh, they, they have many crops, they are a rich region. And then we see now that big desert and uh, in some sense, we have to learn how not to do this here. Then it's very uh, valuable, very important to hear from you what uh, we uh, have, what happened there, and what you are doing now, because uh, you can teach us what not to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you uh, very much okay. for this question. 
And uh, well, I think the the uh, any place on Earth can become a potential is a you know can become a, a desert if mm -hmm. people do not take care of the natural resources, etc. Mm -hmm. And also, the deserts also can be turned green. There is no uh, 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 fatalism, uh, fatalism uh, yeah. around this. So we've seen we've got a great example of Sekem, which is in Egypt in complete desert. And today, when you go there, it's really paradise on earth. And also, as people in this desert also can really turn this into a green, very productive, without using chemicals, without using pesticides. So you can, if they can do it there, it means also we can more easily do it in uh, our own region. Now, the, the reason why um, uh, the, 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 the area has become uh, completely desert I think the, the reason is simple, greed. Human beings have been very greed. You know, all these multinationals, they came to convince our governments uh, that what we needed was to create two dams on the river Senegal, two dams. And then mm -hmm. of course this uh, brought a lot of uh, 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 heavy loans on also on the shoulders of our countries. So two dams which completely killed the river because you know the water became stagnant and parasites started developing and also to pay back for these dams we needed you know to cut down trees to grow cash crops like rice like a tomato like a sugar cane uh, in this area so i mean it was a very very uh, uh, stupid you know strategy uh, in an area that is very close to the desert to cut down trees to plant other things yes. Because yes. I mean, this area is an, is naturally yes. an agroforestry place. We should have uh, uh, we should have really reinforced the existing trees and plant other fruit trees so that you know the desert does not uh, does not uh, you know develop. But again, um, it's uh, the farming practices uh, because uh, not long ago, really not long ago, uh, we used to produce about uh, forty years ago. We used to produce. 100% of organic millet. All our food was 100% organic, uh, our food, you know. And also we use the traditional techniques, you know, to produce a diversity of, of food. And today, because we have introduced uh, uh, tomato and all these cash crops using lots of pesticides, what happens is the land over the years has been terribly degraded. And also because people can read, can write, they use all these chemicals and poison themselves, poison their families, poison the soil, and the yields have gone really, really, really uh, small uh, at the moment. And then, but really what is really, really good is at, at the moment is the communities have taken, uh, uh, the, grow, uh, the awareness in the communities is really growing. They know sometimes, you know, the combination of uh, our central governments, multinational, the international, international, uh, uh, financial institutions, you know, they, these interests, these interests, you know, do not always match with the interests of the local people. There is a very, very high level of awareness among the communities at the moment. Uh, and the people are not ready to follow up, you know, the models that have been imposed on us at the moment. Yes, I understand. Um, I am glad to understand that uh, the people from Africa now can can really uh, look with uh, wise eyes what is happening in the world in some sense. Because when we are here, we, we feel that the Africans may be far away from all these questions. And for us, it's wonderful to see they are in front of the solutions and are bringing very good contribution how to do to deal with these problems and, uh, like pioneers it's wonderful to see this and uh, mm -hmm. uh, i think uh, yes if you, if you just allow me uh, to add something like this i think at the moment you know all these negative voices and powers are getting so loud that that some of the uh, uh, initiatives, community initiatives like yours, like ours, like you know what is also happening in other places on earth uh, are not heard. And then I think now is really the time when in the history at this point in our uh, global history, 
that indigenous communities around the world come together and lead the world out of this crisis. Uh, our voices need to be heard and uh, our actions also need to be seen uh, everywhere in a very peaceful, loving, fraternal way. Uh, because if we just uh, give space to all these uh, uh, harmful forces, then uh, you know uh, there will be more, more uh, destruction. Another uh, idea I would like to add is when, for example, you go to southern uh, uh, in Kazamas, in my own country, uh, when someone dies, people bury the bury the, the dead person with seeds, and then these seeds, when these seeds grow uh, into a tree, the tree is seen as a reincarnation of this of this person. Wow. And then, because wow. all the people are uh, buried together, so we have sacred forests. You know. Uh, most of the time, you know, international development experts, when they come, they just see a forest. They don't see how sacred these forests are. And, uh -huh. yeah, and also, um, yeah, and uh, really? these are the places, temples, where initiations take place. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. wonderful. Yeah, and then, and then also when for marriages, for example, for marriages, uh, the new uh, married are given seeds uh, for the first year when they go, when they start their family, they do not depend on other, uh, others. So it means as marriages happen in different places, in different directions, the seeds also travel in different directions. Uh, and uh, I think, I mean, uh, we as Africans, also modern Africans, we need also to uh, reinforce these uh, traditional practices. Mm, wonderful. Um, I would like to hear you about the two things. For example, Islam is, a, in some sense, is a new religion, like the Christians also, also are, re, are a new religion in Brazil, for example. And the, the traditional uh, uh, religion of the community, uh, how does it, uh, how, how do you uh, uh, deal with them? How are they engaged in this? And it's one question, and related to this, I would ask to you about the borders. I, I know that you have uh, um, tribes, cultural, natural nations and uh, languages, and uh, the, usually the national borders doesn't uh, take in account this kind of, uh, of uh, natural, natural nations, natural uh, citizenship. How do you deal with this? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, for the first question, you know, Islam was introduced uh, into my country around the 10th century. It started in my own region in the north of Senegal, very, very peacefully through trade. Uh, and then it, um, uh, it uh, spread across the country uh, in Senegal. And then uh, in Senegal, we have uh, 90 something, 90% Muslims uh, and 5% Christian, but definitely 100% traditional. Because whether you, are Christian, whether, whether you are Christian or Muslim, you know, there is a, a very important traditional component to it. And there is a thinker from Mali who said, Islam is like, uh, like a river. So like water in a river, it uh -huh. takes the colors, it takes the colors of the rocks it crosses. Uh -huh. And wow. here, because also we have a long peaceful traditions of sharing of, uh, for example, you know, uh, Africans are known to be great travelers. Immigration is not really towards Europe or towards other places, but I mean, here in Africa, we move quite a lot. And, uh, we don't have hotels. We don't have uh, uh, we don't have uh, guest houses. We don't have uh, uh, use hostels. And then uh, because every house is a potential hotel to anyone, you can mm -hmm. come to a place. You can open. You can have food. Stay as long as you wish, and then go. And of course, this is disappearing now in urban communities where we are getting more uh, westernized. Mm -hmm. Still today in Dakar, I can go to any place and have lunch there you know um yeah so uh it's the islam the islam we have here is really really 
uh, very very peaceful, and then it has it has it has it is completely different uh, from uh, all these manipulations in other places where people are just wearing their uh, Muslim, uh, you know, to uh, kill. You know, even in Islam, it is forbidden to kill an, an insect because it is the creature of God, and then it has a soul, and you cannot kill it. An insect. You know, uh -huh. and let uh -huh. alone a human being, let alone, you know, all this. So for us, you know, really these uh, terrorists uh, in some other places are not Muslim, they're terrorists, simply, it's simple as that. Yes. And um, yeah. yeah, and uh, um, we have, for example, uh, in the past, uh, some of our leaders who fought against the French, uh, uh, like um, Bamba was uh, like Mahatma Gandhi. He used nonviolence, you know, to fight against French colonialism. And uh, today, this is one of the most uh, dynamic religious brotherhoods in this area, uh, the Murids. And then I guess you may uh, come across some of them uh, in Brazil or some other places. Now the borders, you know, the borders were decided in the 19th century, uh, 1885. Some uh, French and Germans and Europeans, you know, sat somewhere in Berlin. And then with a pencil, they just drew, okay, you will take this, I will take this, like vultures, you know, saying, I will take this part and you will take this part. And then, of yeah. course, uh, they yeah. divided families, they separated people from their land, they, uh, and even here at the border, at the border in the north of Senegal, you know, we have people on the other side who have their land on this side. You have... Uh, uh, and vice versa. You've got the same family, exactly the same family uh, that is divided into two. Some have become yeah. Mauritanians and the other. Yeah. But I mean, really fortunately, up to the uh, 80s, people in the minds of the people, these artificial borders were non-existent. People would just cross the border in every direction and everything. But I mean, just maybe in 18, uh, 1989, uh, because also of, of uh, the collapse of the ecosystems and the herdings, the conflicts with herders and farmers, we almost went to war uh, with Mauritania. But I mean, fortunately, the communities have understood this is not the way to go. This, uh, we need to create our future through collaboration, partnerships, and revive also the connections uh, of the past. Okay, um, one question more. I, I think it, it's taking long because uh, uh, I don't uh, know if we have this time, but I would like to you to ask you another question. Would you rather, uh, if I give maybe much shorter answers so that you can ask all the questions you would like to? <laughs> okay, about the, for example, now it's said that uh, the, the people from this region is under pressure from the terrorists or war chiefs, war groups. Is it true how to deal with them? Yeah, I think Europe in general has a great responsibility in this because as uh, everyone knows that Africa is really rich with so many different sorts of minerals. Uh, the French uh, government uh, killed Gaddafi in Libya and Libya had lots of petrol, lots of weapons. It just spread all over, uh, all over, you know, the region. Uh, and uh, of course, because uh, it just whets the appetites of so many people. Uh, but at the time, you know, in Senegal and yeah. Mauritania are relatively safe yeah. from from this. Where we have our eco villages and everything, it's very very peaceful. So we just hear it from far away. And uh, uh, and of course. Uh, it's just um, uh, economy, controlling the economy, dominating the economy, because also a lot of petrol, that's a very bad news for us. I mean, a lot of petrol gas has been discovered in Senegal. Up to recently, we were a very, very peaceful country, but I mean, again, uh, Russians are interested, uh, Americans are interested, uh, Chinese are interested. Uh, we have so uh, many problems of uh, land grabbing and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just uh, because the West and the East uh, are interested in, uh, it's just, you know, the old uh, colonial song that is going on. You know, here in Africa, for example, we have, uh, in West Africa, we have what we call joking relationships. You know, joking <clears throat> relationships when uh, 
uh, we uh, the different uh, between the different ethnic groups and uh, people meet even for the very very first time they can talk to each other and joke make fun of you of the other and the other when they know that you belong to the other uh, community they have no right to get angry they laugh and this made uh -huh. education much easier you know yes. and we solve our conflicts. we solve our conflicts through that and this hap this exists between villages neighboring villages this exists between different ethnic uh, groups this exists between inside families and then uh, uh, really uh, also you know the west says africa is poor but we don't feel we are poor we feel we are very rich with our traditions we feel we are very rich with our soil, our technologies, our, you know, we have absolutely no complex, uh, you know, uh, to nourish. You know, the West, okay, has its own uh, way of seeing things, but I mean, we don't have to take this and then, you know, as, uh, no. Uh, and then, then, you know, with these, uh, uh, Senegal is a very stable country. Uh, and uh, so these joking relationships also exist in Mali. It exists in other places in Guinea. Uh, but again, also sometimes also we have very corrupt uh, religious, uh, no, uh, not religious, but I mean political leaders who also are, um, you know, uh, receive orders from multinationals or receive orders from also uh, uh, from other uh, governments. But I mean, fortunately, uh, here in Senegal, I mean, it's a very democratic country. We can voice our mm -hmm. ideas without being threatened. And so, uh, you know, we mm -hmm. just, we can talk. We can just uh, say, no, we don't agree, you know. We pray for you, work together, <laughs> and we're very happy in hearing this. Yeah. We feel you are us in Africa. <laughs> We, we hope to be together if you are like brothers and uh, you smile and joke each other. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> because happiness, happiness, peace, as uh, you know, people say it's uh, already in the mind. It's, uh, you know, That's it. uh, yeah, you know. I, I have just received a written question about, uh, but very quickly about immigration. We have realized in the eco villages that we create, the youth do not travel, uh, you know, to go to other places. And even in some uh, villages like uh, Ndem, the population is growing because uh, they can find work, they can find more comfort uh, in their own places. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Andreas. Uh, how we are with the time? See um, about time. I, I think we're good. If you have one more question that you're so excited to ask, I think there's time. But if you're ready to uh, uh, open up to a public questions, I think that's fine too. So I leave it up to you, Lama. Uh, um, I was I would like to ask a final question then uh, about the connection with the with the Gandhi movement. Uh, the idea of Gandhi was uh, really um, to make uh, uh, a kind of um, it, it came back to the idea of the small communities and the, uh, a federation of small communities. Each one um, find the solutions to itself and uh, each one being helped in helping each other of the communities each other of the communities. Uh, do you feel um, following these ideas also, do you think that we can do this uh, in Senegal and we can do, uh, do this in some sense in our world uh, wide uh, aspect, like uh, the cities and the communities helping each other and the sharing each other. Do you feel this? Yeah, as possible, yeah. really. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then one important also precision I would like also to add. I mean, uh, of course, we use the concept eco village, but I mean, yes. this concept is a, a name uh, in French or in English, but actually yes. it covers the realities of African communities before, yes. before colonization, yes. Yes. before all this, yes. uh, you know, modernization. If you go, for example, to uh, 
a small village like Mundwai at lunchtime when it comes to, you know, so you are the guest of everyone. Everyone will bring you a portion of food. Uh, and at night, they will gather around you to tell you the stories. Uh, and when someone in the community wants, you know, to build a house, the whole community that comes together to help you build the house. Uh, if uh, you want to harvest your, 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 your field, so people also come together and go and support you. When there are uh, yeah. like yeah. funerals, like funerals, you know, people also come and share your grief and then you don't feel alone in this. Uh, for marriages, people also share the cost uh, of all yeah. this. Yeah. And uh, so at the community level, this is already possible. And also at uh, between communities, there are also alliances. And of course, the ideas of uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi are very, very important, uh, you know, uh, uh, because it's uh, nonviolence, it's a fraternal love. And so we feel as Africans that these are real African, you know, values, real African uh, uh, ideas and concepts that we own, we possess. So we find, you know, ways to um, uh, live this, these values in our everyday uh, day life. And of course, uh, here uh, we would love, you know, to connect uh, with the sub communities to create some twinships uh, so that people can travel in different directions, learn, uh, grow together and uh, uh, embrace each other. So again, uh, Africa is far away from what the media conveys. It's not a country, it's con it's, they're not, we're not countries of wars or, so they are very, 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 very peaceful and uh, full of love. And then we're open also to embrace uh, other communities like yours so that we can really uh, learn together, live together in harmony uh, and very, very peaceful. And we are together, really. You have a home here. You have thank a house you. here. We can come also. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lama. Thank you. Deeply appreciate it. Thank you. OK, thank you. Then, Andreas, we, we, we can uh, bring the other questions, the contribution of the people who we are with us. Sounds good. Um, so we have about 25 more minutes. And, but first, I'd, I'd really like to thank both uh, Osman Pam and Lama Santin for this uh, amazing conversation. That, uh, I, I don't know about other people, but I, I, I'm going to be digesting that for quite a while. So thank you. But to continue the conversation, um, we have quite a few people together, which is wonderful. And I know that there have been a lot of questions coming through chat. And so in order to make sure that as many people can ask questions as possible, we'd like to ask um, for people to ask as short questions as, as you're able to. You know, think 30 seconds a min you know, to a minute. And unfortunately, this might not be the right time for sharing of experiences, only because we want to make sure that everybody is you know, we're able to get as many voices in as possible. And so Bruno um, Lasturina, he's going to look at people raising your digital hand. I'm sure that people know how to do this by now. Um, it's in the reactions in the bottom. And uh, so I'll pass it to Bruno. And, uh, and then for, uh, Bruno, uh, for our translator, that anyone who's asking in Portuguese, then Bruno will translate that question to English for Osman. All right, so Bruno, take it away. OK. okay. So anyone wants to, to have a question or? E se, se alguém quiser perguntar em português, então eu posso traduzir para o inglês. So Bruno, is it coming well, through? Are you able to see people's digital raised hands? Uh, I just saw a hand. Um, just a moment. Oh, I see claps only. É para para habilitar a a opção de levantar a mão. Você vai em participantes e aí vai aparecer a opção raise hand. 
ou levantar a mão. Clicando em participantes. Uh, Jeff uh, wants to talk. Can you unmute yourself? Oi, gente. Boa tarde. Queria aproveitar que a gente está conhecendo um pouco mais da cultura africana, que sabemos tão pouco sobre. Um, nós temos uma ideia de que as pessoas que vivem em escassez não aceitam ideias revolucionárias. E ideias... Cujos resultados... Cujos resultados vão a longo prazo. Então, ele encontra esse tipo de resistência quando chega nas comunidades com ideias? So, Osman is here. Maybe não Osman... aceitarem porque são de longuíssimo prazo e não veem nada a curto prazo. Existe esse tipo de resistência? So, so maybe Osman is hearing in the English translation channel? Or... No, I think you need to translate it, Bruno. I cannot see him. Uh, Osman, are you hearing us? Um, I've heard uh, long-term ideas, right? <laughs> yes, uh, he, he asked uh, if, um, if you face some kind of uh, resistance in the traditional communities uh, for the fact that some, sometimes it's difficult to see short-term results to the actions. Uh, or maybe some things only are visible in the long term, and if you face some kind of resistance because of that. Um, yeah, I mean, um, really, um, you know, our lives are shaped by stories. Stories are extremely powerful. And once they root themselves uh, in our brains and our ways of life, it's very, very difficult to remove them. And uh, um, of course, you know, we receive so many different influences and sometimes on the ground, you know, uh, you've got uh, politics, you've got, uh, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, not, not everyone can understand at the beginning. But I mean, by perseverance, when uh, in the we use also uh, the traditional channels of communication, like uh, the palaver trees, people meet under a tree and discuss and uh, go through all this. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, the uh, most important thing here to face is really the uh, psychological maybe obstacles sometimes. And uh, so for this, we know how to Uh, we, I mean, we learn from this. We also were, uh, we face it every day. But I mean, normally, I mean, this is just part of uh, uh, of uh, community development. And also, of course, uh, even if you, uh, in any eco village in the world, you know, not everything is perfect. You know, people, things keep changing every day. There are challenges of uh, governance. There are challenges mm -hmm. of uh, all sorts. And then this is really part of life. And then we need to face it in a very realistic way and also find very flexible and uh, fraternal ways also to go around these issues so that, you know, the objectives can be attained. Great. Thank you. So Mo Borba wanted to also ask a question. Hi, dear Usman. Um, <laughs> É, querido Lama, que saudade do senhor, que bom ver você por aqui. Uau. <laughs> uh, I would like to ask uh, Usman how about about how is the policy of receiving volunteers if you have this kind of reception in in your project in Senegal and and if is it possible to people like me To work with Can you. they come tonight? <laughs> can they come tonight? <laughs> I, I believe I believe I can make some effort. 
but I'm serious. <laughs> I do want to know. Yeah. If... Yeah, we um, really, I mean, we need so many, uh, we need volunteers to come. And uh, of course, uh, now is uh, uh, with all the challenges with pandemic and all this, uh, it's a little bit difficult. And then globally, also speaking, Africa is not very much affected by uh, COVID-19 as uh, you know, it was predicted before. But I mean, to come back to your question, we'd love to have caravans, caravans of, uh, of volunteers. There's so much work that could be done at so many different levels. Because when we uh, want to create, you know, eco village hubs in different places, uh, we need the trainers, we need people to support some uh, educational projects, we need to people to come and help plant trees, we need people to, you know, at different levels, we need lots of expertise. So that, uh, and also, you know, this cultural exchange is very, very important. You know, we would love to know uh, uh, how things are done there in Brazil. We'd love to know how things are done somewhere in India or in Thailand. And of course, through this uh, cultural, you know, uh, exchange, uh, we can also all grow together and learn. And then of course, we would love to have uh, uh, volunteers uh, come. And we, we are have, very open and we pray for them. We have an increasing group of communities that work with agroforestry. This is really uh, um, increasing in Brazil. Uh, and how, how, how can we organize this? Um, do, do you have any contact the, those uh, they were they, um, showed in the, in the chat? Is there the way to talk with you? Okay, let, let me step Please, in. Please, yes, point. yes, yes. Osman, if you don't mind, I'll just step in for a second that um, we'll send out to everybody who's registered all the information and contacts. And so anyone who wants to get in contact, there'll be a way. And I want to make sure that we can move on and uh, Thank also you. hear some other, other questions. Thank you very much. So uh, Bruno, uh, take it away. Who's our next raised hand? So Luciana is uh, raising her hand. Hi, um, I would like to ask Mr. Tama about uh, the, the process of decision-making communities. I've had some experience in Mali and Burkina Faso as architect. I've been there as architect with uh, architect without borders working, and I was very amazed in how traditional communities, small communities, they got they had this traditional ways to decision making processes. And I I would like to ask you to share with us, please, this uh, traditional ways like listen to the elders, listen to each other, and give them the opportunity for everybody to express their feelings and how is it i think that's an issue question in local communities how we sometimes we struggle like as Emma Sampson mentioned before that we we sometimes we manage to gather people but we struggle in uh, getting to a consent thank you Yeah, I think I've understood uh, the question, decision-making, how decision is made on the ground, right? Yes. Okay, good. Based Thank on the you. tradition. All right, yes. Um, again, for example, you know, this notion of eco-village, um, uh, you know, the community, the community aspect is very, very important. And as you know, um, uh, here, we don't create, you know, eco villages, you know, artificial settlements, and people start, you know, from scratch, because our sense of community is already very, very strong in many of the villages we work with, and uh, so uh, th there are already traditions in place. And uh, I told you about the palava tree, uh, as an older all the sections of the community come together and talk and share. And, you know, and again, this notion of uh, uh, the elders giving advice to the people, the elders, uh, the youth also being uh, connected at, as age groups, uh, all this count, all this count. And actually uh, it's very, very, uh, the decisions are not vertical, but I mean, they're uh, transversal. I mean, uh, and, uh, 
uh, we have also different groups, for example, like uh, the fishermen who manage everything that is related to uh, water and the water reserves. We have uh, uh, the Lobe, who are the woodcutters and woodcarvers who also have, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the responsibility for this. We have, uh, you know, uh, the griots who are responsible for storing and recording, you know, uh, history, the conflicts, resolutions, and all this. Uh, so heard, heard at some uh, in, 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 in a way. Uh, and after this, this becomes a community uh, decision, and every can, everyone has to uh, respect these decisions. So it's uh, it's very very complex, uh, you know, but at the same time, uh, very uh, democratic uh, in in many ways. Great. So Leonardo Colares uh, wants to ask a question. Obrigado, and Dr. Usman, thank you for your presentation and compliments for your work. My question is, uh, um, who owns uh, the land where the food forests are? And uh, how does the uh, uh, sharing of the product of the forest work, uh, how does it work uh, with uh, uh, the share of the income that the forest generates? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Um, Actually, so far, we've been creating community orchards in different villages, okay? So we work with the women. Uh, they show us a, a, a place, and together we put a fence, we bring the food, they, we make, uh, we dig a well, and they take care of it, uh, care of it, and owned by the families. So they come and uh, take care of it and harvest it. Uh, so the the idea is uh, uh, in all the villages to create, you know, the same. Uh, but so far, I mean, uh, we've been just to, uh, we have just uh, achieved a number of them. And um, in the food uh, forest, um, it's, it's emerging at the moment. We haven't to produce food at the, uh, you know, we have been just planting. But I mean, Redes uh, has been 10 hectares. These 10 hectares are under Redes uh, management and control. Um, and uh, so it's uh, on this place also that we have the intercommunity uh, center. Uh, so the idea is when uh, uh, the, uh, the, the trees grow and we produce uh, fruit, uh, so to this, this income to support uh, the, uh, the activities, uh, the programs of the training center. So then we will create a circular, uh, a circular uh, uh, income, uh, a circular income within this. And then, so many people will come and learn. I'd like to introduce to you a great lady. Say hello. <laughs> okay, go, 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 go. All right. So uh, we would like, you know, to uh, the site where the emerging forest is is uh, supposed to become a demonstration site where people can learn how to manage the water or to um, uh, regenerate their forest, uh, the forest, the land, how to, etc. And already planting trees, some people around us are already also imitating this and this is for us wonderful. Wonderful, uh, Bruno, I'm gonna step in because unfortunately, I believe that we're out of time, and uh, I hope that there'll be a lot of opportunity in the future for more exchanges between uh, Sebi and uh, and Regis, uh, Hedges and uh, and other groups. But unfortunately, there's just uh, there's not the time to take any more questions today. But uh, hopefully, there'll be uh, there'll be other options for engagement. So, uh, wrapping up um, this section, I'd like to. Um, ask Lama Santim if uh, you'd like to give any final words for us. Lama Santim, are you out there? 
I think you are muted, Lama. Ah, okay. Uh, I was saying, um, we are so happy with all this conversation. And uh, I think it enriched our perspectives, our vision of the world and brought us a lot of uh, positive uh, hope, positive visions of what to do. And uh, I'm really happy. Um, I, I have a question, for example, um, it said the, the Chinese, in some sense, they say they are trying to develop a sustainable society. But uh, they are sometimes criticized uh, for their role in Africa, like a big country making pressure of the people. Uh, could you explain uh, what your, your uh, what is your vision if they are bringing uh, benefits or they are bringing benefits and harms and uh, if they are only uh, bringing pressure to the to the community movement and uh, to these efforts of um, uh, bring again uh, 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 a good uh, uh, way of uh, living for the people in Africa. Yeah. Um, China is trying to uh, replace the uh, the traditional colonizers of, of Africa. You know, they're the mm -hmm. English, the Portuguese, and they're the French, and all. You know, and. Uh, lending uh, African governments a lot of money for infrastructure. And at the same time, uh, really uh, China is trying to uh, put a hand on uh, the natural resources uh, of Africa. Uh, for example, you know, countries like uh, Senegal where we do not have enough, uh, you know, enough uh, control over our seas, we receive lots of uh, uh, Chinese sheep and European sheep that uh, come and take uh, away, you know, the fish without any. Uh, and also, we have another major problem. Also, uh, is land grabbing. Land grabbing is happening at a very, very fast, uh, you know, uh, rhythm here in Africa. And also, the Chinese are also part of it. And uh, here in Dakar, for example, you, you know, we have a whole area. Uh, we call Chinatown, and then uh, paradoxically, because this is also where we parade our independence, it's fully occupied by the Chinese that are also knocking people out of business. Uh, so one, uh, definitely one uh, thing is we don't want, you know, uh, colonizers, whether they come from China or from, uh, from Europe, we would like to be free and walk freely on our land and decide, uh, you know, on our businesses. And, uh, but I mean, we are ready also to forget, uh, to forgive, not forget, forgive uh, everything that has been done by the colonizers here in, in Africa, but, uh, and also to recreate a, a new world. We would like, you know, to treat with equal partnership with China, uh, with any other superpower in, in, in the world. And uh, uh, so this is how we feel. And then we feel that China is coming with force and uh, again, doing basically what the Europeans have been doing in the 19th century. Colonization is not over yet. Even slavery is not over yet. Uh, these uh, realities are still part of our today's world. And we communities at, this, uh, at the grassroots level, we want to find ways to stop, uh, you know, uh, to stop these processes. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for your, your answer also. And Lama, do you have any final words for us? Um, I'd like to say that uh, we are a good, uh, a good track, a good way. And, uh, we, we really started uh, with the correct uh, uh, movement. I think uh, Dr. Osmani uh, was a truly, truly uh, true, good, uh, uh, brought the true good contribution for our efforts in said talks. It's exactly what we would like to, to hear. And uh, in some sense, he inspired us and uh, he shows 
um, what we can do and that we're not alone as we think we were. <laughs> we thought we were, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Rosmani. Can you allow me one? Can you allow me just one sec? What I'm saying is really the same forces that are oppressing Africa are also oppressing Europe, are also oppressing uh, America, are also oppressing, it's uh, that's just the, the obscure force of financing. Yes. Yes, that's it. I feel that- So uh, it's not one uh, nationality against the other, but it's uh, stronger forces. Yes. That's it. For example, sometimes, uh, sometimes I uh, we can say it's the Americans, or we can put uh, the 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 pressure of the nationalities. But it's not that. If we see the American people, for example, they are also pressed by the same force. It's not the American nationality. The American people is under this pressure also, and all the the people in the, in all the continents are under this pressure even in the, uh, what they say, develop the countries. And uh, uh, Osman, do you have any final words for us before we all part ways? Yeah, it's, it's been uh, a real delight to be part of this fraternal circle. Um, and I really would like to thank you for making this possible, for creating the bridges, uh, and uh, really a big thank you uh, to Lama, to you, Andreas, to everyone who in one way or the other have made this possible. And again, uh, this is also the amazing uh, opportunity that also technologies can, uh, and can offer us today. And amazingly, my computer did not turn off. <laughs> and thank you so much. Thank you, it's been an honor, a pleasure. Thank you. A pleasure. Thank you so much, Osman. And uh, I have absolutely no doubt that there will be engagements between the eco villas in West Africa, the SEBI communities, and anyone who's been following the chat, seeing uh, the gen communities also manifesting themselves. And so I have no doubt that this will be the beginning of some new connections, both virtually and physically. So uh, with this, I think we'll start to wind up that uh, please join me again in thanking uh, Dr. Palm so much for contributing his time and knowledge and, uh, and uh, teaching us from afar. And, uh, and it's a little bit late in Senegal, so even staying up a bit late for us. So thank you yeah. so much, Osman. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Bruno. And, uh, and maybe just a final pitch that uh, this is the first of hopefully many SEBI talks for SEBI to engage the world in, in some new and interesting ways. And next month, October 20th, we're gonna have Roshi Joan Halifax, the founder of Upaya Zen Center in uh, New Mexico joining us. We have some members from Upaya Aki Zoom, uh, here in Zoom with us. And then in two months, we'll have Sensei David Loy, who's a Zen teacher and a social theorist, and we'll certainly be looking towards uh, continuing every month and getting voices from all around the planet. And hopefully we'll have, uh, every SEBI talk will be in a different language. So Lama, get ready to speak uh, a lot of different languages. <laughs> <laughs> Great, uh, so uh, Bruno, will you, will you uh, close for us? Yes, so thank you again, everyone. And, and we meet again in a month. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>